All right, if you own a carbon fiber barrel or you're thinking about purchasing a carbon fiber barrel, this is probably the most important video you'll see. And I really wish somebody would have done a video like this before I got into carbon fiber so I understood it better. This way I could have made a more educated decision on my purchases. I have a stupid amount of experience behind carbon fiber. From accessories to barrels, And I've picked up a lot of great data along the way. And I'll, I'll watch videos where people are using carbon fiber barrel and they'll kind of like mention some of this information in passing, but they never highlight it so it never feels like it's important. I have seen a number of carbon fiber rifle barrels fail, particularly in hot Magnum cartridges where they are being shot more than a couple times. And I wish they would have because I would have made totally different purchasing decisions. So. The most important thing you're probably concerned about is accuracy. With carbon fiber, you are not buying a more accurate barrel. A good stainless steel or steel barrel, you are looking at the same exact accuracy. So in carbon fiber, best case scenario, you're hoping for similar or the same accuracy as you would get out of a stainless steel or a steel barrel. What you are buying with carbon fiber is reduction in weight. But let's go back to accuracy for a minute. Now see with carbon fiber, what's supposed to happen, and on paper it makes sense, like this is supposed to happen, but in practice it doesn't. So with carbon fiber you're looking at temperature reduction and strength. So why? Why, why, why would it give you that? You're replacing steel with carbon fiber. Well for temperature reduction, if you ever notice all your heating ducts, your dryer vent, your thermal blankets, everything is shiny. It's for a reason, because energy acts really similar to how light works. So if you have something reflective, it will reflect energy. However, this is the, this is the rub, this is the catch to that. It has a very hard time getting rid of temperature once it warms up because it's reflective. The energy, the energy just bounces around inside of it. It doesn't disperse. With a darker color, it heats up quicker, but it also gets rid of temperature quicker. That's the rub. So you can either avoid getting warm, but once you get warm, you're gonna stay warm longer, or you can get warm quicker, but you're gonna cool down quicker. So the carbon fiber, because it's black, and like a stainless steel barrel, it has a lot of chromium in it, nickel, other metals, very reflective metals. When stainless steel heats up, it holds that temp for a long time. Carbon fiber, because it's black, it'll suck up that temp and then disperse it right away. So it's supposed to cool down quicker or not get as hot as fast because it's getting rid of heat quicker. And it's supposed to be stronger because carbon fiber is stronger than steel. So inside of a carbon fiber barrel, you have a really, really, really thin barrel that goes down the center. And then they try to get that rigidity back that you would normally get from having a bigger, thicker barrel by wrapping it in carbon fiber and giving it like a backbone. And to some degree that does the work. Now with temperature for some reason, it affects the point of aim on this a lot. Like way more than I've ever seen on a steel barrel. As a matter of fact, with this particular gun, I was convinced the scope was broke because my point of aim would shift so drastically and I couldn't figure it out. Let me grab a target here. Basically, like I go to the range this is just a hypothetical trip. None of this really happened, but just so you kind of get an idea. Well, I mean, it did happen, but in this special range trip, I'd be aiming right here and I'd get an impact right there. So it would take me about three rounds, sometimes five, to get it back on target. So then I'd go to shoot a group. I'm already five into it. <coughs> so then I'd go to shoot a group and I'd go for a five shot group. Well, the group wasn't perfect, and it would be slightly over this way. And I'm like, well, what the hell? I just corrected from right here to right here. So I'd correct back a little bit. Then I'd shoot another five-shot group, and I'd be slightly over this way again. So then I'd correct, correct back. And then I'd be like, okay, now I feel like I got a solid zero. Let's shoot it for realsies. Let's, let's print a five-shot group. Remember, I'm like 15 shots, maybe even 20 shots into it by now. 
So then I'd shoot a five shot group and I'd print like three MOA with this rifle, three MOA. <coughs> so that's why I thought the scope was broken because it would just print wild ass groups. Finally, and this would happen every single time, several rain trips. And this is not a fluke, like this just happened with one box of ammo or a couple of rounds. I have something like 200 casings in here. I have another 50 that are prepped and cleaned, waiting for reloading. And this is with factory ammo. I haven't even started reloading yet because I want the rifle squared away before I start reloading because the reloading supplies I got are all Gucci and it's actually going to cost me more than just buying the ammo. So like this, this is consistent. Finally someone's like, hey, don't adjust your point of aim. Don't do anything. Just print a group right out of the, right out of the case. Just print a group. I print a group sub MOA. I'm like, what the shit? And obviously I printed the group right there. So then I print another group. This one was a little bit over one MOA, but it was still pretty close. It was like one and a quarter. So I print another group, sub MOA. And I noticed as I was shooting, my point of impact would change and go down to the target. Now remember, every rifle is an individual and every rifle is going to act differently. <coughs> but this is something repeatable. Like if you even go to Proof Research's old videos when like everything's honest, like this is what our shit does. Look, they talk about zeroing the rifle. Now he shoots his first three round group and it's a different spot. I'm willing to bet he spent too many rounds zeroing that and he had a point of impact shift. And then, he gets a flyer on the third round. He does two different groups, both of them exactly the, or it was the second round. The second round is always a flyer and then there's two on top of each other. I, I would willing to bet that barrel, every three shots there's one flyer. That's my exact experience with this, except I got five. Out of five shots, one of them will be a flyer. It's usually number five, but sometimes it's number four. Like for this range trip, I printed a three round group. I was sub MOA because I know the fifth round is a flyer. I went and started another group. Number four was where I was aiming. Number five went wide. So I had to scratch that group and I went to another one. This is a five shot group with one flyer. Same thing every single time. And I called Krieger Barrels because I'm like, well, hey, you know, maybe not talk to a carbon fiber place because they're probably not going to be honest with me since I own their product. Let's talk to a, a precision rifle company. Like, let's see what they have to say about carbon fiber barrels. And I quote, they said, no less than one time, but as many as five times a week. People call them with the exact same story explaining exactly what I'm seeing. So then I called the guy that barreled the action, which he's a straight dude. Like, if you want a barreled action, that is the guy to go to right here. Nemesis Firearms. No BS kind of guy. Always lays everything out for me. Well, after I explained to him what was happening, he actually apologized to me. He's like, I'm sorry, man. Because of the twist rate you requested... And how you did it, I assumed you were building a hunting rifle. If I would have known what you were building, I would in no way even let you get a carbon fiber barrel. I would have pushed you to stainless steel. But because you requested a 1.9 twist rate and a 300 PRC, in my head, I thought you were building something for like moose hunting or something like that. Because if you wanted to go like weight precision, everybody else wants like a 1.8 or a 1.75 or a 1.7 so they can run those really, really heavy, long projectiles to be able to get the maximum BC. I chose 1.9 because I found through my experience if you line up the twist rate with the projectile you're gonna shoot, you don't just overspin it for no reason at all, 
But if you line that up, is where I typically see the best accuracy. So I always match my twist rate with the projectile I plan on shooting. The projectile I planned on shooting was this box right here because this is the heaviest off-the-shelf 300 PRC ammo I can buy and a 1.9 is perfect for this. Absolutely perfect. I can even bump up to 230s if I want to reload. Now if I want to go to 250s, well now I'm going to need like a 1.8 or a 175. I chose to go with something on a factory build ammunition. Because for tax reasons, it's a whole lot easier for me to just do a write-off on a box of ammo than trying to log the hours I put into reloading the ammo to make my own ammunition. So it's easier for a tax write-off if I just buy the ammunition. And that's what I fully intended on doing with this rifle, so I chose a 1.9 twist rate. But he even said, yeah, that is totally normal for carbon fiber barrels to have a flyer. Each barrel is an individual. They will all do things differently but typically the rule is you will have a flyer and if you run a long string of shots it's going to fall apart that's just the way it is if i'd have known you were making a more precise precision rifle i would have pushed you to stainless steel to avoid those problems he even had a worse story for me so he had a rifle that would fire nine right on top of each other and one round would be a flyer that sounds great right the rub is, or the catch is, the one that was a flyer was always the cold bore shot. The cold bore shot would go wide. If he were to count that in his 10 shot, shot group, it would be multiple MOA. But if he gets rid of that one and pretends like it doesn't happen, the other nine are right on top of each other, printing sub MOA all day long. Like I said, with this particular rifle, out of five shots, one will be a flyer. It's almost always number five, but every once in a while it's number four. So, repeatability, it is there with these if you understand what type of repeatability you're looking for. If you want to throw 20 round strings on top of each other, it's probably not going to happen. Depending on what caliber you go with, because like when I called Krieger, they said people are typically fine with 223, but when they start getting up into like AR-10 size, like 30 cals or 243 or 260 or 65 Creedmoor or... Uh, six millimeter creed more they start running into problems i don't have that problem with my 243 but this isn't exactly a carbon fiber barrel this is a really thin barrel in the center with an aluminum sleeve over it and they have some sort of filler on it this is a draco barrel but this barrel even if i start burning through my 20 round magazine a little bit too quickly by like shot number 15 or so my groups just fall apart and i get a point of impact shift so i know if I'm shooting quickly, I max out at about 10. On a nice slow string of fire, I can make it to about 20, but she's got to cool down, otherwise the next magazine, I'm gonna print like multiple MOA groups. With this 22, this is a great platform for this carbon fiber barrel. However, at the bottom of a 25 round magazine, I'll start to see a point of impact shift. Not that big of a deal, it's small. If I fire like, 50 rounds in a row, it gets a little bit bigger. You know, 75 rounds, we're getting even bigger yet. But relatively speaking, a carbon fiber barrel works on this perfectly. I've never run one on a 223, but from what Krieger was kind of feeding back to me, 223 works great as long as you keep your rate of fire nice and slow. You start trying to speed up your rate of fire, well, now your groups are just going to go to shit. So... It is reliable, it is, repeat, or it is repeatable, it is accurate if you understand what's going on. So what can you do about it? Let's pretend you already have a carbon fiber barrel, you're running into the exact problems I'm having. How do you address it? Well, you need to figure out exactly when your groups fall apart and how quickly the point of impact shifts. What I recommend doing is going to the range, regardless where the shot is going, do not change your zero. Just stay right there in the center, make sure every single shot counts, and print your group. It doesn't matter where the group is, just print that group and count how many rounds you can go before you break out of sub-MOA. Then you know the number. Like, okay, this is the number. If you can, let the rifle cool down, but like mine will do, mine will do a four-shot group, Number five will be a flyer. 
Like that, that's pretty consistent. I know that's what this rifle is gonna do. On the next group, I can basically get another three round group, but then the number four shot will be a flyer. But I'll still print a sub M away if I get rid of the one flyer. On the next group, now it's gonna open up. Now I'm not looking at sub M away with a three round, three shot group anymore. It's gonna be really close to one M away. The following three shot group, now I'm getting into like 1.5 MOA, 2 MOA. So I know I can shoot repeatedly about 10 rounds, about 10 rounds, and I'm going to have two flyers, which ain't that bad. So if I were to break down into groups, it would be I could fire a three shot group, then I can fire two, which will be over an MOA, then I can fire another three shot group that will be sub MOA, then I'm going to have a flyer at number four four or five. Because I know that I can play with this rifle staying inside of that. Obviously if your very first shot, you know, like your cold bore shot's the flyer, sell the barrel on eBay. Because I mean, unless you're willing to just put one in the dirt every time before you shoot, there's not a whole lot you can do. So all right, now you know the number of how many shots you can fire in a row accurately. Now the next thing you can do is start working up a load. This way, even when that flyer happens, it still stays tight. Like if I work up a load for this and get this down to like a quarter MOA, that flyer will bring me up to like 0.75. So I'd be able to fire two five shot groups and still stay sub MOA. I'm not going to go through that kind of work with this probably. I'm ultimately probably going to wind up rebarreling this and then just give this barrel away to one of you guys. But so that's what you do. Work up your load, maximize the accuracy you can already get so when that flyer does happen, it still stays nice and tight. And understand how many shots you can fire in a row before that flyer happens. That will help you be able to use the rifle. That will take your problem and bring it back usable. Again, if your cold bore shot or like the second or third shot's the flyer, well, there's not a whole lot you can do. And every barrel's an individual. Everything's going to be different. Hell, you may have a barrel that can run... 20 rounds in a row before you get a flyer. Like Krieger said, I'm doing damn good with this 243. Be able to fire that many rounds in a row and stay sub MOA without a stainless steel barrel or just a solid steel barrel, that's good. Most people can't. When they get calls, it's usually with a caliber above 223. So if you're thinking about buying a carbon fiber barrel, just make sure to apply it to the right sort of build. This is an excellent build. This is a great build for carbon fiber. There's very little heat from the 22. It has plenty of time to cool down. Excellent choice for a carbon fiber. Magnum caliber, like 300 PRC? No, this is a horrible choice for carbon fiber. The Magnum caliber just has so much powder and heats up so quickly, at least in this application. Again, like I said, I can only get four shots reliably, and not even really four, I'd actually count it as three, basically one out of five, I'm gonna have a flyer. Now the guy that was the manufacturer said he had that in a 300 rum. First shot was a flyer, and then he could put nine shots on top of each other. So just pick your application wisely. A hunting rifle, that doesn't really matter. I mean, right here's the flyer on this particular group. That doesn't matter, that's still within the size of a big game heart. And this is at 100 yards. At 200 yards, double this. So it'd be here. That's still within the vitals. 300 yards, double that. That's still within the vitals. So for a hunting rifle, that's, that's a great way to go. You can eliminate a lot of weight off your barrel by going with carbon fiber. Precision rifle, some sort of sniper rifle, some sort of competition rifle. No, you're going to want to go stainless steel. Carbon fiber is not the barrel to pick. Especially if you got to do a string of shots because your group is just going to face plant. But anyway, I hope I had given you the information you're looking for. If you are thinking about going carbon fiber, this is the best of my experience. And I collaborated this information with several manufacturers. They all come back saying, yeah, what, I, what I'm experiencing is about dead on for carbon fiber. So... Thank you for watching. Like to help support the channel, got my Patreon right there. I also have affiliate links in the description down below. Just by clicking on those links, even if you don't purchase what that particular link is for, just click it on that, and then doing the Amazon shopping you were already gonna do anyway. And a little kickback for it because you came there off my channel. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.